Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Uh, today we will start talking about the regulation of the circulation and we will start with nervous regulation uh, which represents the rapid control of arterial pressure. في عنا تحكم أو سيطرة على blood pressure بطريقتين طريقة اللي هي سريعة جدا وهي represents the nervous طريقة بتكون أبطأ وتأخذ وقت وهي renal regulation okay now our overall objectives for this lecture is to know the functional aspects of autonomic nervous system in terms of uh, regulation of blood pressure. Uh, also describe the bearer receptor reflex and uh, to identify the function of chemoreceptors. Also uh, the function of atrial reflex as well as uh, the function of central nervous system ischemic reflex. Now what are the main functions of the nervous system that are related to the regulation of circulation? The first function is to redistribute blood flow. So in other terms, the nervous system can uh, change blood flow, can increase blood flow to tissues that uh, require uh, a higher uh, uh, blood flow, okay, uh, because of their increased metabolic activity. And it, it can also decrease blood flow to tissues that are inactive or have low uh, metabolic requirements. The second function is to increase the pumping activity of the heart, which is a very uh, potent function for the nervous system uh, regulation to increase pumping activity of the heart uh, to increase of course il, il stroke il cardiac output with uh, stroke volume the third function which is actually our main scope in the, for this lecture is the fast or acute control of arterial pressure and that's important to reduce the fluctuations of mean arterial pressure due to different conditions or different reasons. إذا تمنع التذبذبات الكبيرة جدا أو changes في blood pressure بتحاول إنها تخلي blood pressure within a normal range. Actually, these functions are um, actually uh, are performed via a special system of the nervous system which is called the autonomic nervous system. Now what is the autonomic nervous system? It has two main branches. It has the sympathetic nervous system and it has the parasympathetic nervous system. In general, sympathetic nervous system is important in control of circulation, okay, uh, as well as the heart, okay. The parasympathetic nervous system is important in regulating only heart function. So it has nothing to do with vascular function or circulatory function and that's actually because of the uh, distribution of uh, these two systems looking at the distribution of the autonomic nervous system regulation you can see here the sympathetic chain okay uh, which is a prevertebral and uh, we can see here the pre and post synaptic fibers of the sympathetic nervous system which are distributed as you can see here and innervates uh, vessels uh, various vessels uh, blood vessels uh, of the circulatory system um, so 
the distribution in the vascular system is very high for the sympathetic nervous system. Uh, most uh, blood vessels are innervated, uh, as well as the heart. You can see here innervation for the heart from the sympathetic nervous system. Uh, the uh, walls of the heart, as well as the uh, nodes, uh, the uh, autorhythmic nodes of the heart, is a node. Okay, so uh, the innervation uh, uh, actually includes the, both the heart and the vascular system um, by the sympathetic nervous system. However, the parasympathetic innervation is actually uh, specific for the heart. That's why I say the parasympathetic nervous system has a, a heart function, okay, only a heart function and it's actually uh, supplied by the vagus nerve. So the parasympathetic for the heart is supplied by the vagus nerve, uh, which has uh, its nu nuclei here uh, in the uh, brain or the central nervous system. And uh, here we can see the cardiovascular uh, center in the uh, brain stem we have nuclei called vasoconstrictor nuclei and we have cardio inhibitor nuclei and vasodilator nuclei that we will discuss in more details uh, later on. So let's look at the distribution of sympathetic innervation. Uh, sympathetic fibers, as we have seen, they innervate all blood vessels. So the innervation is for arteries, veins, arterioles, venules, except, so the exception is for the capillaries and pre-capillary sphincters and some of the meta arterioles are not innervated by the sympathetic. So arterioles, venules, veins, arteries, okay, and most of the meta arterioles are supplied by the uh, sympathetic nervous system. However, capillaries, precapillaries, sphincters, and some of the meta arterioles are not supplied by the sympathetic nervous system. Okay, so the function of uh, sympathetic innervation of small arteries and arterioles mainly to uh, actually uh, regulate or adjust vascular resistance. So the innervation of arterioles mainly makes the sympathetic nervous system uh, able to control or adjust resistance in the body because we know that arterioles uh, have a major role in resistance. That's why they are called resistance vessels. So the sympathetic nervous system is a potent regulator of uh, total peripheral resistance. Now, large veins also uh, and the heart are, uh, have a sympathetic innervation. However, the parasympathetic nervous system is mainly important in the heart function and mainly the heart rate function. Uh, as we have seen, the vagus nerve supplies mainly the area of the uh, SA node, okay, which controls the rhythm or the heart rate. Now, uh, also the vasoconstrictor fibers that uh, are distributed in various uh, organs, they are distributed throughout uh, all the circulatory system, but the distribution is greater for certain organs, such as the kidneys, the gut, spleen, and the skin. Okay. However, uh, there is a list potent distribution and less potent control over the coronary circulation of the heart that supplies the heart the vessels that supplement the heart or blood supply the heart and also the uh, cerebral circulation or the mojude in the brain uh, there is less potent control by the sympathetic vasoconstrictor system now uh, let's go back to the arterial pressure and how is it related to cardiac output and total peripheral resistance. So this formula we've got from the Ohm's law. 
So we all know that cardiac output equals uh, delta P, okay, divided by total peripheral resistance. And now if we are looking at arterial pressure in particular, and re, uh, uh, let's say reorganize el, el, the formula, it will become ar arterial pressure equals cardiac output times total peripheral resistance. So that means arterial pressure is directly related to both cardiac output and total peripheral resistance. So the higher cardiac output, the higher arterial pressure, the higher uh, resistance, okay, the higher arterial pressure. How can we increase arterial pressure? Arterial pressure can be increased by either constricting almost all arterioles of the body. By constricting arterioles, we decrease their diameter. And by decreasing their diameter, we increase the resistance of these uh, arterioles. So diameter and resistance are inversely related. Okay. So when we increase resistance, we increase the force exerted on the walls by the blood volume. And that will actually increase the uh, pressure. Okay. Also, we can increase arterial pressure by constricting the large vessels of the circulation so not only arterioles but also the uh, large vessels of circulation and that actually will be responsible to increase the venous return so when we talked about the sensibility and compliance we said that uh, the venous circulation is the blood reservoir and if we increase the resistance or constrict these veins uh, we will decrease their compliance so we will uh, redistribute blood or shift shift blood uh, more blood will be returned to the heart and that means increased venous return and when we increase venous return then we will increase cardiac output okay and when we, we increase cardiac output by this formula, you will know that arterial pressure is going to be increased. So this is the second way of increasing uh, arterial pressure by, uh, by constricting the, mainly the veins, which are the blood reservoir, by redistributing blood to the heart, increasing venous return to the heart, and increasing cardiac output. The third way to increase blood pressure or arterial blood pressure is by directly increasing cardiac output working on the heart, nafso. So sympathetic nervous system can increase the heart rate as well as contractility of the heart. So when we increase heart rate and contractility, we increase cardiac output because cardiac output, okay, um, cardiac output equals cardiac output of the heart equals heart rate times the uh, stroke volume. So the relationship between cardiac output and heart rate is direct. Also, contractility. If we increase contractility, we will increase stroke volume. Okay, uh, when you increase the contraction force of the heart, uh, then uh, the stroke volume or the volume that is going to be pumped out of the heart for each heartbeat is going to be more. And this will increase stroke volume. And stroke volume, if it was increased, we will have an increase in the cardiac output and because cardiac output is directly related to arterial pressure so then we will have more or uh, uh, an increase in the arterial pressure so uh, this actually represents the ways by which or the mechanisms by which arterial pressure can be increased by the sympathetic nervous system okay
Now let's look at the uh, vasomotor center, okay? Uh, the center that controls the uh, uh, constriction uh, of the blood vessels or the uh, circulatory system. The vasomotor center transmits uh, impulses or signals downward, okay? Uh, from the center into the cord and to the spinal cord and from the spinal cord through the uh, sympathetic nervous system into all uh, blood vessels or most of the blood vessels. If we look at the uh, position or location of vasomotor center, you will see that it is present in a bilateral uh, 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 direction. Uh, of the reticular substance of the medulla as well as the uh, lower third of the cons. So it's uh, actually present between the medulla and the cons. So uh, this is the center uh, that regulates the vascular Tone. That's why it's called vasomotor center. If we look at the composition of the uh, vasomotor center, it's uh, actually composed of a vasoconstrictor area, vasodilator area, and a sensory area. Okay, so these represent the nuclei that send the impulses, which varies. Uh, some of them are uh, vasoconstrictor, uh, which uh, actually originate from the vasoconstrictor area. And some of them decrease the vasoconstrictor uh, tone, which are called vasodilator area. And the third area is the sensory area, which receives the impulses or uh, signals in the receptors which detects the uh, changes of mainly uh, the uh, blood pressure from uh, certain uh, parts of the vascular system and the or the heart. Okay. So uh, the vasoconstrictor area of the uh, vasomotor center tibat uh, or sends signals continuously through the sympathetic fibers. Then the fibers. هي اللي بتنقل السيجنالز تاعت الفيزو كونستريكتور اريا وهذا بيحدث في جميع الاوقات بغض النظر عن انه في عندنا خطر او لا وهذا بيعمل لنا شيء اسمه فيزو كونستريكتور تون اوكي فيزو كونستريكتور تون اذا هدول الامبولسز ار امبورتنت تو مينتين ا بارشال ستيت اوف كونستريكشن اوكي اللي هو بنسميه فيزو موتور تون او فيزو كونستريكتور تون بيعمل لنا فيزو موتور تون وهذا موجود في مفروض يكون موجود في كل الاوقات بغض النظر زي ما حكيت لكم عن الحاله اللي بواجهها الانسان مش فقط احنا فاهمين انه فيزو سيمباثيك يعني فقط في حاله الخطر بيشتغل لا هاي التون دائما كونتينيوس موجوده Uh, signals, sympathetic signals, بتروح على ال blood vessels, بتعملنا vasoconstrictor tone, okay, يعني بتكون في حالة من ال constriction طول الوقت, okay. طبعا إذا بدنا نشوف تأثير, if we want to see the effect of the continuous vasoconstrictor tone, uh, ممكن by uh, an experiment, إنه uh, نحسب ال arterial pressure. And we can perform total spinal anesthesia to see the effect of removing this uh, sympathetic tone. So this will actually decrease blood pressure from 100, okay, into 50, which is a huge decrease in uh, arterial pressure, okay. And how could we uh, have known? that it's due to sympathetic uh, stimulus and not something else. If we inject norepinephrine, which is the uh, neurotransmitter of the sympathetic nervous system, we will return back to the uh, higher values of blood pressure. 
we can reach even 125 by injecting norepinephrine. Okay, so we uh, abrogate the effect of anesthesia by injecting a sympathetic neurotransmitter, which is norepinephrine. So that shows the uh, importance of having uh, the sympathetic impulses okay, to maintain a normal blood pressure of 100 because removal of this tone will cause blood pressure to drop down to 50 millimeter mercury. Okay. Now, the lateral portions of the vasomotor center, then few areas in the vasomotor center on the lateral side, controls the heart activity. Okay? It sends impulses to increase heart rate. Okay? So, uh, then some of the areas of the vasomotor center controls heart rate and contractility. Then, a sympathetic nervous system not only regulates the vasomotor tone or the vascular uh, resistance, but also regulates the heart contractility and the heart rate, uh, and that is by increasing the contractility and increasing the heart rate. <clears throat> the medial portions of the vasomotor center will uh, transmit signals by the vagus nerve to decrease the heart rate. Okay, so uh, this is actually uh, a center, a part of the center that is specific for the parasympathetic control of the heart. Okay, so by sending the impulses by the vagus or uh, via the vagus nerve fibers to the heart, especially to the SA node, it will be responsible for decreasing heart rate. And this is the main function of parasympathetic uh, system uh, in, the, um, uh, in the circulatory or vas uh, cardiovascular system. Uh, if we look at the neurotransmitters that are responsible for the vasoconstrictor uh, uh, effect or function of the sympathetic nervous system. So the main neurotransmitter for the vasoconstrictor nerves is uh, actually norepinephrine. And uh, we know that uh, epinephrine, which is a similar, similar in structure uh, but released from the adrenal uh, medulla, it's the same structure but released from the adrenal medulla, so uh, norepinephrine is considered a neurotransmitter and epinephrine is uh, considered uh, an endocrine hormone. So both of them can bind to alpha adrenergic receptors that are distributed in the blood vessels uh, and induce uh, constriction of the blood vessels or vasoconstriction of the blood vessels. However, uh, epinephrine or norepinephrine can bind to another type of receptors that can be also found in some of the blood vessels uh, in uh, skeletal muscles, in, uh, in uh, sometimes in the uh, actually in the uh, coronary uh, circulation, uh, also in the alveoli, which are called beta two receptors, and binding uh, this binding will cause dilation of the blood vessels. Okay, so depending on the receptor, we will see the effect, but the main effect of the uh, sympathetic nervous system through all the uh, vessels is vasoconstriction, except in uh, the places where we can find beta-2 receptors, then uh, the result can be dilation instead of constriction. So this is the uh, nerve ending, uh, and this is the uh, presynaptic terminal, and this is the postsynaptic terminal, as uh, you have uh, actually studied in, um, in the introductory course to physiology. And this is how the neurotransmitter is released and bind to the postsynaptic, uh, it could be a smooth muscle cell here, to induce the effect uh, depending on the receptor. Now, uh, there is also a contribution of higher centers of the brain, uh, which influence the uh, vasomotor uh, center. Uh, and you can see that uh, some of the areas in the cortex 
and also in the hypothalamus okay they can exert powerful uh, excitatory or sometimes inhibitory effects on the vasomotor center so the vasomotor center can uh, center can be influenced by higher centers which can uh, induce large effects or uh, strong effects on the vasomotor center, center or the vas cardiovascular system an example of how higher brain centers can affect the vasomotor or influence the vasomotor uh, function is uh, sometimes in some people emotional or strong emotional stress can uh, stimulate uh, some areas in the cerebral cortex which send impulses into the hypothalamus and the medulla <clears throat> and that will result in reduction or decrease <clears throat> in the sympathetic uh, nervous uh, stimulation as well as increase in the vagal stimulation or the parasympathetic stimulation this strong uh, parasympathetic stimulus as well as the reduction of sympathetic output will result in a reduction of the total peripheral resistance <coughs> and reduction in venous return and cardiac output uh, if resistance is reduced عنا بقل كمان معاها ال venous return لأنه زي ما حكينا the veins highly compliant لما تزيد resistance the compliance تبعها بقل بينما العكس صحيح لما the compliance تزيد اللي هي هنا انخفضت the resistance فزاد the compliance this will reduce the uh, venous return راح يقلل uh, distribution of blood or return of blood into the heart <coughs> ف reduction في venous return will result in a reduction in cardiac output فراح يقل كمان ال cardiac output زائد انه total peripheral resistance لما نتقل will reduce also blood pressure <coughs> will blood pressure reduction also reduces cardiac output حسب العلاقة بين cardiac output and arterial pressure <coughs> all of these effects will reduce the cerebral blood flow إذا arterial pressure لما ينخفض ما بيكون في قوة تدفق كافية للblood to reach the cerebral uh, cortex أو the uh, blood flow but this will result in loss of consciousness حالة من الإغماء أو فقدان الوعي. <coughs> Now, how does the um, sympathetic nervous system uh, via the vasomotor uh, center can increase arterial pressure? The increase in arterial pressure can happen very fast and within seconds by three main ways that we already discussed, but let's Uh, uh, repeat them again. The first thing is by constricting uh, most of the arterioles of the body, which will increase the total peripheral resistance. A resistance في الجسم بترجع نسبة كبيرة منها إلى resistance في ال arterioles. وال arterioles لما إحنا نعمل constriction فيهم منزيد resistance بشكل كبير. Once we increase the resistance, that will directly increase the arterial pressure so this is one way the second way is by constricting the large vessels of the circulation including including in large veins uh, that return blood back to the heart so when we constrict large veins مثل مثلا veins اللي بتودي blood الى heart that will actually uh, increase او رح يعمل لي shift Our redistribution of the blood that is uh, uh, reserved for the venous circulation. Okay, so when we do redistribution of the blood, uh, we see it, it will increase the blood return to the heart. It will be called venous return. That uh, will increase the cardiac output, حسب, or according to Frank Starling law. Increasing the cardiac output. will directly increase the blood pressure لأنه العلاقة بينهم direct relationship 
Now, the last uh, way or step is by uh, influencing the heart rate with contractility. A sympathetic by the vasomotor center can increase the uh, heart rate as well as contractility of the heart. Uh, once we increase heart rate, we increase the cardiac output. And if we increase cardiac output, على طول من relationship, uh, it will increase arterial pressure. Increasing cardiac output will increase uh, uh, pressure. The contractility, لما نزيدها, again, it will increase the stroke volume. And this will increase cardiac output. Increasing cardiac output will also increase arterial pressure. So let's summarize this. Uh, sometimes uh, a sympathetic stimulation that is a strong can uh, be in exercise or fright. Then the two situations uh, mainly will induce a vasoconstrictor uh, center of the vasomotor center, which will increase sympathetic nerve activity and will reduce parasympathetic nerve activity. These two effects with that is sympathetic lemon zidha will increase the total peripheral resistance. Okay? With zidal peripheral resistance on tariqal vasoconstriction. Also will increase venous return. Kaman be sabbil vasoconstriction lal veins. It will increase venous return. It will increase heart rate. It will act sympathetic stimulation will act on the SA node to increase heart rate. And finally, increases heart strength or contractility, which will increase also stroke volume, cardiac output. And finally, all of these will increase the arterial pressure. So this, uh, this rapid increase in arterial pressure, يحدث مثال عليه during the exercise. بيكون في high metabolic demand فبصير في stimulation لل sympathetic center لل vasomotor center اللي هو vasoconstrictor center وبالتالي will induce increase in the arterial pressure طبعا الهدف من الزيادة بال arterial pressure اللي هو to increase the blood flow اوكي لانه ال metabolic needs زادت عن الطبيعي أو في الفرايت بصير في كمان sympathetic stimulation اللي هي مثل حالة ال fight or flight response. Now let's look at the arterial baroreceptor reflex, which is an important way, important way uh, to regulate the arterial blood pressure. How can our body or our vasomotor center sense uh, changes in arterial blood pressure. It's uh, uh, due to this reflex. It's a type of, uh, of reflexes that involves receptors. Those receptors detect changes in blood pressure. That's why they are called baroreceptors. موجودين بالارتيريز وبالذات باللارج ارتيريز مثل الأورطة. Uh, those are very important for short or acute regulation of arterial pressure. Leish leinno bittim el reflex within a very short time. The reflex ibara an an daira. Reflex ibara an daira. Hai daira ibtibda or is initiated from the receptors that that are called baroreceptors. أو هم نوع من stretch receptors أو sometimes يسموهم press receptors هدول ال baro receptors موجودين زي ما حكينا في large systemic arteries مثل الأورطة لما يرتفع ال pressure when the pressure increases stretch of these receptors increases and this will cause them to transmit signals into the vasomotor center لأنهم مربوطين ب uh, uh, sensory fibers into the uh, vasomotor center. They send these impulses, okay, uh, on طريق طبعا the uh, autonomic nervous system. And then the uh, uh, the stimulus uh, that will go to the vasomotor center will cause a response, okay. Uh, this response 
اوكي رح تروح على البلود فيسلز كمان فيا ذا نيرف اندينجز اوف ذا اوتونوميك نيرفس سيستم انتو ذا فيسلز اللي هي سيمباثيتيك فايبرز ات ويل جو تو ذا فيسلز اند ويل ريديوس ذا سيمباثيتيك امبلسز اللي هي الفيزو كونستريكتور تون ات ويل ريديوس ذا فيزو كونستريكتور تون حتى يرجع البلاد بريشر الى النورمال تو ريديوس بلاد بريشر اند جو باك تو نورمال اذا انكريز ان بلاد بريشر باي ذيس ريسبتورز ويل ريزالت ان ا ريدكشن ان ذا بلاد بريشر اذا نوع من الكوركشن او التصحيح للبلاد بريشر اللي هو طبعا ضروري جدا تو هاف بلاد بريشر ذات is uh, normal and within normal range okay now let's talk about these baroreceptors uh, the type of these receptors is prey type nerve endings uh, they are found in the walls of the carotid bifurcation uh, which are called carotid sinus and also in the walls of the aortic arch اللي هم الاورتيك بيرو ريسبتورز سو ذيس ار ذا تو مين تايبس اللي هم الكاروتيد ساينس هون اذا على البايفوركيشن او بيفور جست بيفور بايفوركيشن اوف ذا كاروتيد ارتري اوكي اند وي هاف انذر وان ان ذا اورتا ويتش از كولد اورتيك بيرو ريسبتورز طبعا connected by ال aortic bear receptors connected through the vagus nerve b the vaso motor the carotid sinus connected by the endings or nerve endings branches من the glossopharyngeal nerve okay اللي هو اسمه herring's nerve و طبعا بالنسبة لل aortic through the vagus nerve طبعا بيروح لل vagus nuclei بالنسبة لل carotid ال carotid sinus بيروح لل nucleus tractus solitarius okay the nucleus of the glossopharyngeal nerve now these signals that will be carried through these sensory Uh, nerve fibers اللي هم جايين من البيرو ريسبتورز اوكي هدول السنسوري سيجنالز ويل بي ترانزميتد انتو ذيس نيوكلياي سو اف ذير از ان انكريز ان بلاد بريشر رح تكون الريسبونس تو ديكريز بلاد بريشر اف ذير از ديكريز ان بلاد بريشر رح تكون الريسبونس من السنتر إذا كان reduction رح يكون increase. Okay. So let's look at the mechanism by which the carotid sinus respond. رح نلاحظ إنه in this graph we have on the x-axis the arterial blood pressure in millimeter mercury, and on the y-axis we have the number of impulses of the carotid sinus per second. إذا the rate تاع the firing of the uh, carotid sinus. Uh, we will notice that as much as uh, the arterial pressure increase, the firing uh, or the rate of firing increases, okay, until it reaches a constant or a plateau, constant value, uh, after تقريباً 150 أو 100 أو تقريباً 130, okay? So, The carotid sinus respond to pressure تقريباً between 60 and 180 okay 180 millimeter mercury أكثر من هيك ما رح يكون في good response لأنه ال firing rate نلاحظ إنه بلش يثبت ال receptors they respond لل changes طبعاً حكينا لل arterial pressure And it is mostly sensitive at around 100 millimeter mercury. طبعاً عرفنا هذا الحكي من الميل الميل أو السلوب of this curve. 
منلاحظ إنه أكثر تغيير أو sensitivity بتكون للفايرنج ريت على 100 فالكوركشن بيكون أفضل شيء لما تكون الـ blood pressure values around 100 millimeter mercury كل ما زاد الزيادة في الـ pressure رح يرافقها زيادة في الـ number of impulses أو الـ rate في الـ impulses ولما نزيد الـ rate of impulses Uh, this will affect the vasomotor center with that the vasoconstrictor. It will inhibit the vasoconstrictor center as well as activate the vagal center, يعني the parasympathetic uh, center. Okay, now we're going to do inhibition of the vasoconstrictor, activation of the vagal. كل ما زادت الفايرنج تاع هاي الساينس. Okay. So in order to uh, understand the function of the baro uh, reflex, uh, we can uh, actually study this experiment of the carotid sinus. Uh, in this experiment, we applied constrictors onto the common arteries. So before the bifurcation, يعني before the carotid sinus, applying constrictors or clamps in these uh, uh, points This will reduce uh, blood flow and as well uh, the blood pressure that is sensed by the receptors in the carotid sinus. So the firing rate of the car carotid sinus will be reduced, okay, that will be sent or transmitted through the herring's nerve and the glossopharyngeal nerve into the vasomotor center. Reduction in the firing of the, this sinus will actually increase the sympathetic uh, uh, vasoconstrictor tone and it will decrease the vagal tone. So this will result in an increase in the blood arterial blood pressure. So we can see this in the graph on the right that represents the arterial changes, arterial pressure changes uh, uh, before clamping and after clamping and after release of the clamping. So before clamping, the arterial pressure was normal, 100. After placing the clamps, you will notice that there is a sharp increase in blood pressure uh, to 150. And this will remain high until we remove or release the clamps. Then it will go back to normal. So then uh, we can conclude that Uh, applying clamps before the sinus, this will reduce blood pressure around or surrounding the sinus and reducing pressure uh, uh, surrounding the sinus will result in an increase in the arterial pressure. Okay, بسبب الزيادة في sympathetic vasoconstrictor tone and the reduction of the vagal tone. So if I ask you a question, if you are moving from a supine or uh, uh, lying down on a bed then you move from that position to a standing position what would that induce okay would it increase heart rate or increase total peripheral resistance or increase constriction of veins or all of the above okay We actually will find that all of these will happen due to moving from supine to a standing position. And now I will explain to you why does that occur. So the shortest, shortest uh, answer for this question is that the barrel reflex will work. Because when we are in supine position and suddenly we stand up, uh, there will be a decrease in the blood volume. Okay. Uh, why? Because of the gravitational force of blood. Okay. blood is when we stand, we see gravitational force that is 
uh, drawing or uh, pushing blood downward اللي هو ال weight gravitational weight of blood so then venous return will be reduced and because venous return is reduced uh, there will be a reduction in cardiac output so when cardiac output is reduced then the blood that is uh, going uh, into the uh, cerebrum or into the brain will be reduced okay uh, because blood pressure is going to be reduced على طول reducing cardiac output will reduce blood pressure or arterial blood pressure ولما ال arterial blood pressure uh, drops على طول it will be sensed by the baroreceptors موجودة في الكاروتيد أو في الأورطة فبالتالي ال firing of these receptors will be reduced uh, في ال vasomotor center uh, طبعا هذا will result in increase في sympathetic activity So shortly after standing ال baroreflex بيشتغل sympathetic stimulus بتصير بتزيد and this will result in increasing heart rate, increasing cardiac output, contractility, increasing venous uh, return, and uh, veins also constrict. So all of these effects happen uh, due to the baroreflex or baroreceptors reflex. Okay, that's actually very important because it maintains relatively constant pressure despite the changes that take place in body posture. فكل ما إحنا نغير the posture of our bodies, تختلف the forces, وتصير في اختلافات في the venous return أو في the cardiac output, that will be shortly or very fast corrected. مع هاي البيرو ريسبتر طبعا الاكتيفيتيز الممكن تحدث هاي التغييرات كتيرة منها الاكل منها الفيزيكال اكسرسايز منها اللي هي زي ما حكينا السوباين اند ذن ستاندينج اب كتير في يعني بروسيسز ممكن تصير في الجسم وتحدث هاي التغييرات اللي ممكن لو ما في بيرو ريفلكس بتصير في فلكتشويشنز في البلاد بريشر عالي جدا ممكن إذا ما تم الكوريكشن لإلها يصير في إغماء لأنه if the arterial pressure remained low ضلوا منخفض رح يصير ال blood flow للدماغ will be reduced وبالتالي رح يعمل إغماء أوكي رح يصير في حالة من ال loss of consciousness لكن بسبب ال baroreceptor reflex this will be corrected very fast أوكي بحيث إنه حتى يمكن ما نشعر في أي نوع من الدوخة بعض الناس ممكن يحس في دوخة بسبب إنه الرفلكس هاي بطيئة أو في خلل في الرفلكس هاي بسبب خلل في النيرفز مثلا This experiment shows the importance of Bero reflex in maintaining a constant or a normal range of blood pressure uh, so in this experiment, and it is done on dogs, uh, the, uh, we measure mean arterial pressure during the day, during different activities. And we measure for each value of mean arterial pressure, we measure how many times or percentage uh, that this value occurred, percentage of occurrence. So the blue curve represents normal barrow receptor reflex. We have done nothing uh, to the barrow reflex. It is intact, and the nerves intact, the barrow reflex is So in this case, you will notice that most of the day, uh, the range or the blood pressure, mean arterial pressure is around 100. And then, uh, معظم اليوم uh, كانت ال value of arterial pressure اللي هي تقريبا 100 وال variations uh, كانت uh, قليلة جدا variation في ال mean arterial pressure معظم ال occurrence بي كله بيدور حوالين ال 100 ملم mercury however when they denervated يعني شالوا ال nerves اللي بتغذي السينسز اللي هم البيرو ريسبتورز 
شالوا ال innervations تبعهم to the vasomotor center. So in this case, اللي هو بال red line, you will see that the variations, the variations in mean arterial pressure are is very big. Okay, يعني منلاحظ إنه ال ال occurrence عالي لكثير values بتتراوح between fifty to one hundred fifty. أوكي okay. إذا هم ما بيتجمعوا حوالين النورمال بالعكس هم متناثرين ال ال values of blood pressure sometimes very high sometimes very low يعني شوية من الوقت بيكونوا نورمال أوكي okay. إذا في هاي الحالة لما نعمل denervation للبيرو reflex بيكون في high variation daily variation in blood pressure so uh, we can actually conclude that the barrel reflex is very important in maintaining constant uh, arterial blood pressure during the day, during the different activities uh, that uh, anyone can perform. Uh, so this is, uh, again, this is also uh, arterial pressure uh, record for normal and for uh, denervated بيرو ريسبتورز بنلاحظ انه هون الفاريشنز عالي جدا بقيم المين ارتيرا بريشر بينما هون بتتراوح كلها حوالين اراوند ال 100 اوكي لكن لازم نكون كمان ناخذ هاي النوت انه باللونج تيرم كنترول للارتيرا بريشر البيرو ريفلكس ار اكشلي نوت هيلبفول ات اول هما helpful بس في short term regulation يعني لما يصير في acute changes in arterial pressure لكن إذا صار في عندي اختلاف في arterial pressure لفترة طويلة ال receptors are not going to help ليش؟ لأنه ال receptors uh, they have a characteristic that they can adapt they can adapt يعني بعد فترة يصير لهم adaptation للبلد pressure الجديد فا it will consider it as a normal one even if it was decreased even if it was increased عن النورمال إذا من النوع ال receptors من النوع اللي ممكن يصير adaptation إذا صار في long term changes في ال pressure فبتبطل تشوف إنه هذا الضغط مرتفع بعد فترة من الوقت Okay, so they are helpful only for short-term regulation by blood pressure. تغيرات أكيد بتصير بتضبطها لكن ال blood pressure بيرجع للطبيعي ااا فبالتالي ما بنحتاج هاي ال reflex. لكن إذا احتجنا هاي ال reflex صار في تغيير by ال blood pressure that lasted for long time. هون البيرو ريسبتورز رح تعتبر هذا البلاد بريشر الجديد as normal one and it will not work as uh, we it should. Now let's look at another type of reflexes and another type of receptors uh, which are called chemoreceptors. The chemoreceptors are unlike the barrier receptors. They are sensitive to chemicals. Okay, they are chemical uh, or chemosensitive. They are sensitive to uh, lack of oxygen or hypoxia. They are sensitive to CO2 uh, increase or excess. They are sensitive in excess of hydrogen or protons. Where are they found? Chemoreceptors are found next or near the carotid sinus in a, a, a structure that is called carotid body. Okay, اللي هي near the carotid bifurcation or near the carotid sinus, and it's called carotid body. Okay, and also on the arch of the aorta. Okay, and on the arch of the aorta. Now, when these chemo-sensitive receptors are activated, طبعاً إما due to oxygen lack or excess of CO2 or hydrogen. They are connected with the vasomotor center. They will excite the vasomotor center, okay? And excitation of the vasomotor center 
will result in increase in the sympathetic activity and will result in increase in the blood pressure uhada will result in increase in blood flow okay so uh, the actually the uh, pressure value that chemoreceptors are sensitive to uh, is not the same range as baroreceptor sensitivity. إحنا حكينا بالبيروreceptor sensitivity uh, values بتتراوح uh, ما بين 60 ل 150. Okay. والbest حكينا 100. فأقل من 100 Uh, this will be uh, will stimulate these receptors and more than 100 will stimulate these receptors okay لكن بالكيمو receptors ما راح تحس بأي شيء إلا لما ينزل الضغط أقل من 80 ملم ميركوري إذا ال sensitivity تاعت الكيمو receptors below لما ال pressure falls below 80 ملم ميركوري هون بتبلش تحس ال receptors اللي هم هذول الكيميكالز بتصير تحس فيهم وببلش يصير في ستيميوليشن في هذول الريسبتورز اذا السنسيتيفيتي تاعت الكيمو ريسبتورز وين ذا بريشر فولز داون بلو 80 ملم ميركوري يعني كثير انخفض اوكي انخفض اكثر من النورمال فاليو اللي هي 100 اللي هي ولا 90 تقريبا 100 80 فلما تقل عن 80 هون بيصير في عنا reduction of O2, increase CO2, and uh, increase في الهيدروجين أو decrease في pH. They will induce the chemo receptors to stimulate vasomotor center to increase the sympathetic activity. فهي بتيجي uh, مش ال first line, بتيجي second line بعد ال baroreceptor uh, reflex. Okay, and then they will increase blood pressure. Now this is another reflex or another response اللي هي منسميها Central Nervous System Ischemic Response طبعا هاي Ischemic Response بتصير من اسمها نتيجة Cerebral Ischemia يعني نقص الأكسجين في البرين في السيربرم So when the cerebral blood flow decreases في طبعا في السيربرم في السيربرال كورتكس هذا راح يؤدي إلى الزيادة أو إكسس في الـ CO2 أو الكربون ديوكسيد and this will directly stimulate the vasomotor center ما هو موجود كله بنفس الفلويد في نفس الـ space so this will induce the vasomotor center directly and vasomotor will increase arterial blood pressure okay Uh, the response is actually very powerful. Response of ischemic response is very powerful. It activates very powerful activator la a sympathetic vasoconstrictor system. Yani bsir fi very strong sympathetic activation and increase in the arterial uh, blood pressure. Lakin lazam na'raf is sensitivity ta'at al ischemic response. إذا مش أي دروب في الـ blood pressure بتأدي للـ ischemic response طبعا لازم ينخفض الـ blood pressure below 60 ملم ميركوري لحتى إنه تصير الـ ischemic response إذا هاي لسه كمان less sensitive أوكي وبتصير على الـ dangerous دروب uh, uh, في الـ blood pressure اللي هو around 60 ملم ميركوري كل ما كان uh, الـ drop أكثر كل ما زاد الـ, uh, الـ strength of This response. فبصير activation أكثر less sympathetic. وال greatest activation بيكون at pressure of 15 to 20 ملم ميركوري which is very 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 low and life threatening. Okay. في something uh, that is called Cushing reaction which is a type of uh, central nervous system ischemic response. هذا بيحدث لما يصير في increase في البريشر في ال CSF أو ال cerebral cerebrospinal fluid وغالبا بتم نتيجة يصير في compression لل blood vessels فلما يصير في compression لل blood 
فيسلز من السي اس اف من السيربرو سباينال فلويد اللي هو متجمع هاد رح يضغط على البلاد فيسلز ويعمل ريدكشن في البلاد فلو which will induce ischemic response اللي هي رح تبدا عندنا الاسكيميك ريسبونس هون ب stimulation تنتهي ب stimulation that is very strong للفيزو موتور سنتر واللي رح تزيد المين ارتيريال بريشر بشكل كبير ذس اسكيميك هذا بنسميه كوشنج رياكشن اوكي ذا الكوشنج رياكشن هو مش ريدكشن في البلاد بريشر بشكل عام بالجسم لكن هو بيحدث نتيجة مشكلة في السيربرو سباينال فلويد في في البرين بيكون في زيادة فيه فبيعمل كومبريشن للبلاد فيسلز فبيصير عندنا انخفاض للبلاد فلو في هاي الفيسلز وهذا بيصير بتعمل اسكيميا وبالتالي بيصير في تحفيز للاسكيميك ريسبونس اوكي وبيزيد البلاد بريشر في الجسم كله طبعا الزياده بتصير في البلاد بريشر للجسم كله Now if the ischemic response, central nervous system response, صارت بشكل طويل أو prolonged, هاي ممكن تعمل لي depression effect لا ال vaso motor center. يعني إذا طولت هاي ال ال ischemic response رح تعمل بدل ال activation رح تعمل depression لا ال vaso motor center وصير في نتيجة عكسية. إذا هاي فقط في حالة ال prolonged ischemia. للسنترال نيرفس سيستم ليش؟ لأنه نفس ال طبعا الاسكيميا هاي رح تعمل ديليتيريوس افكتس على نفس خلايا السنترال نيرفس سيستم اللي اللي اصلا مكونة للفيزو موتور سنتر فبصير في دامج في الفيزو موتور سنتر فبصير في هاي الديبريسنت افكت. Now let's go to another example of the artery reflexes which are the atrial and pulmonary artery reflexes so uh, in the atrium as well as in the pulmonary artery there are a special kind of receptors or bare receptors some home low pressure receptors low pressure receptors in uh, home they can uh, detect changes في اللو بريشرز الموجودة في الاتريوم والبلمونري لانهم uh, they detect values that are low طبعا احنا بنعرف انه البريشر فاليوز في الاتريوم والبلمونري ارتريز كثير لوور ذان البريشر فاليوز في الاورطة اوكي او الكاروتيد فهدول البريشر ريسبتورز they sense the variations في البريشرز اللي هم كلهم ات لو رينج they help to minimize the arterial pressure changes كيف بالذات لما يصير في اختلافات في البلاد فوليوم فاذا زاد if blood volume has been increased اوكي okay, uh, لاي سبب كان مثلا صار في ترانسفيوجن او لا فلويد لا انسان يحتاج الى ترانسفيوجن لفلويد وفجاه صار في انكريز للبلاد فوليوم او اخذ وحدات دم اضافيه هذا الانكريز في البلاد فوليوم رح يعمل لي ستريتش لهدول اللو بريشر ريسبتورز اوكي هدول اللو بريشر ريسبتورز على طول رح ياثروا they will perform two main functions اول فانكشن انهم they will induce the release of atrial natriuretic peptide من الاتريوم اوف ذا هارت اللي هو الاي ان بي والاي ان بي بيعمل مثل خافض ضغط طبيعي اوكي او مدر للبول Okay, so the main function of the ANP is to reduce the pressure on the way to increase sodium and water excretion. It draws sodium and water. That will result in reduction in the volume of the blood and reduction in blood pressure. Another way is to also decrease the sympathetic activity of the kidney. Okay, and this actually will affect the sodium reabsorption. راح يقلل من the sodium reabsorption. راح تزيد من the glomerular filtration rate. بالإضافة إلى إنه كمان it will affect the antidiuretic hormone. راح تمنع أو تقلل the rate of antidiuretic hormone. 
فبالتالي يعني في النهاية رح يزيد الصوديوم والووتر إكسكريشن يعني الإدرار رح يزيد the blood pressure والدروب أو رح يعني هذا رح يمنع الزيادة في the blood pressure. So uh, this is an example that uh, actually demonstrates how uh, effective is the low pressure receptors. If we infuse 300 ml mil of blood into a, a patient, this will result in an increase of only 15 mm mercury. طبعا لما يكون في عندي intact uh, arterial barrier reflex and the low receptor atrial and pulmonary uh, receptors. But if we removed or denervated the uh, arterial barrier receptors, aorta, this will result in an uh, increase of 40 mm mercury. Okay, يعني 40 ناقص 15, uh, 25. Okay, the arterial barrier receptors مسؤولين عن uh, 25 mm mercury. هلا لو شلنا الباث low pressure اللي هم atrial okay and removed اللي هم arterial barrier receptors راح this will increase the blood pressure of about 100 millimeter mercury راح يزيده 100 millimeter mercury يعني مية ناقص خمستاعش eighty five 85 هذا رح يكون مسؤول عن الباث اوف ذيم مسؤولين عن زيادة 85 وال only بيرو ريسبتورز مسؤولين عن 25 اذا اللو بريشرز اوكي مسؤولين عن 85 ناقص 25 اوكي 85 ناقص 25 يعني مسؤولين عن 60 بالمية 60 ملم مركوري إذا هم even more important than the bare receptors في حالة زيادة the blood volume أكفأ في تخفيض the blood pressure okay now let's look at another reflex which is called Bain Bridge reflex uh, this reflex is an atrial one, يعني من الاتريوم, والmail main control uh, على the heart rate. Okay. Uh, هلا ال main function اللي هي to prevent damming of blood في the veins, في uh, الاتريوم, uh, plus the pulmonary circulation. إذا هذه ال reflex متخصصة لمنع تراكم ال blood في the veins اللي هي مربوطة في الاتريوم. في الاتريوم and the pulmonary circulation اللي هي ال uh, pulmonary اللي اللي هي right side of the heart circulation. Now, if there is an increase in the atrial pressure, okay, هذا رح يعمل stretch على الاتريوم. It will automatically increase the heart rate من 40 إلى 60 بالمية, 40 to 60. Then how the stretch of the atrium will uh, actually send signals, okay, to the vasomotor uh, center by the vagal afferent fibers. Then the vagus nerve, fi uh, ilo afferent fibers, the he direction tabaha, غير عن the afferent fibers, okay, the afferent بتكون sensory. Then, بس عن طريق the vagal nerve تنبعت هاي ال ال sensory fibers. وبتروح على الفيزو موتور سنتر اوكي وهناك بيجي سيجنال لانه نزيد الهارت ريت يعني بصير في مور ستيميوليشن للفيزو موتور سنتر تو انكريز هارت ريت اند كونتراكتيليتي يعني سيمباثيك اكتيفيتي اوكي اذا نرجع نلخص هاي الريفلكس او البين بريد ريفلكس لما يصير في اتريال ستريتش طبعا لانه في فينس ريتيرن عالي هذا بيؤدي الى انه تنبعث سيجنالز عن طريق الفيجال افيرنت فايبرز انتو ذا فيزو موتور سنتر اند فروم ذا فيزو سنتر بيرجع مره ثانيه عن طريق الفيجال نيرف خلال السيمباثيك فايبرز إذا الأفيرنت بتروح عن طريق الفيجس والإفيرنت بترجع عن طريق 
sympathetic fibers uh, be a vagus nerve and this will increase heart rate and contractility okay so uh, these are uh, actually a very important uh, reflex uh, because it decreases the damming of blood في uh, high region و في pulmonary circulation لأنه لما نزيد the heart rate و contractility احنا هيك بنعمل uh, efficiency في the pumping و بنمنع التراكم blood uh, اللي هي نتيجة الزيادة في the venous return so uh, so far uh, this is the most important uh, regulatory mechanisms uh, of the blood arterial blood pressure by the central nervous uh, system uh, we will continue uh, talking about arterial blood pr uh, pressure regulation long term in the next lecture uh, thank you and goodbye